friends, we're gathered here together at the old sound shop recording studio. This is Randy Blake with WJJD Radio in, in Chicago, Illinois. I have with me here, what is your name, sir? A fellow disc jockey. My name is Lance Husky. Lance Husky, he's a pop disc jockey, but he will be interviewing two very famous people who have been reunited for the first time in probably at least 35 to 40 years. We're so proud to have them with us here on our station. We have the famous Lester Flat. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, welcome, Lester. Thank you. We also have the very famous Bill Monroe. Howdy, folks. I'd like to say howdy to all our friends and fans out there. And we've been on the Grand Old Opera since 1939. They ought to take care of it. Do you have a question for him? Yes, I just uh, recently heard that you have reconciled your relationship here. I just would like to know uh, what caused all this. What did he say? Would you like to go first, Lester? Well, I don't know. I think it goes back to the early days when uh, when we just wouldn't get in the right billing with uh, the Monroe Bluegrass Boys, and I think we just parted ways because me and Earl wanted to go out on our own, you know. And of course, the money wasn't the best in the world. I, I, I heard it was over women. Is that true, Bill? Uh, with, uh, women had a lot to do with it now. Um, but you know, I, I, I give Lester a job first, and then Earl come along, and, and, and I give him a job and put him on the opera. Earl, Earl, who was um, uh, Scruggs. Yeah. Scruggs come in. He come in from North Carolina, and, and Flat come in from uh, Tennessee up there around Sparty, and I put them on the Opry and really built their name up to where they could, they could really, you know, really try to help them and bring them along, and, and they help bluegrass a lot. Is it true, Lester, that y'all had nothing to do with creating bluegrass music, that it was all created by from, Mr. Monroe? He'd come here from Kentucky in 1939. And, and uh, Lester, you're from Sparta, right? That's Sparta, Tennessee. So right. that would mean you'd have nothing to do with creating bluegrass. I think I had a hand in it back then. I don't think Bill was the first uh, mandolin player. Uh, I think Curly Seckler's about as good as, as Bill ever was on the mantle. Did Seckler never played in the key the keys like B and B flat in his life while well, he had to have it down there open where he could he could go like this with it with well, this we always see. used a cheater back back years ago. Well, that, that's right. There was a lot of cheating that was going on back in there. Not half as much as it was in the, the Bluegrass Boys, but Nashville Grass is fine, upstanding boys. Nash Nashville Grass, you would have thought they could have picked a name that didn't have nothing to do with a bunch of horns. Well, uh, I, you boys, I hope that we don't uh, kind of pour a little gasoline on the on the uh, the fight here tonight, you know, and start another uh, dispute between you guys because you've finally gotten together after that, 35 that's right. years, and, that, that's and we right. want to keep it as calm as we can. That's right. But I, I do understand that that uh, that uh, Mr. Monroe here, I, I say with a great deal of respect. Uh, probably did have a lot to do with creating bluegrass music and had it not been for television that they say that the Flatt and Scrub show would have died a natural death. Well at least we got chosen to be on the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, well they said so that, that was a bunch you, of politics. Well I think he just knew class when they seen it. What, what do you think, Mr. Monroe? I, I never did know nothing about no hillbillies. We we wore white shirts and ties when we come here. We didn't want to be called no kind of a hillbilly. You wore regular ties? That's right, and we brought that here when we come here in 1939. From Every, Kentucky? That's right. Everybody up there would wear a white shirt and be a gentleman about it, and he would not be wearing just anything and letting people call him a hillbilly. And what else was the other guys wearing at the Opry? They, they would wear this kind of a plaid outfit, and, and just like a farmer would wear or something like that, but we wanted to really put it up there like, like people would really want to see a show you see. <laughs> Y'all look like a bunch of farmers, best I can remember. I want you to listen there to that the right there. Field. Now you see that? Now he's starting every bit of this. <laughs> now he's coming in there with this stuff that just needs to be left right back on up there in Sparta where it comes from. Lance, do you have a question there? Well, uh, I've always wondered, I've heard about this, Bill, that you wouldn't let Flat and Scruggs in the dressing room at the Grand Old Opry to tune um, up. Is that the truth? No, no, there was a lot of people that was really against that there, and, and, and it didn't matter to me because I, I didn't know what they was up to one way or the other, but there was other people that wanted to keep them out, you see, because they just didn't think that what they was doing would fit here at the Opry. I don't think y'all ever were in tune that I can remember. 
Uh, who's that? The, the bluegrass boys. I don't think it is ever was in tune. Well, we, we taught you all how to tune, and then, and then you took it with you, and, and, and then you stayed in tune for a few years, and then it got plumb away from you. Well, not to take anything away from you, Mr. Monroe, but I understand the first time that y'all were in real good tune together was when Kenny Baker came on your band. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, sir. Now, that, that man right there, now, he was a drunk. He loved it, and he had to have it, boy. And he would just let it run his business, and, and, and sometimes he would want a fiddle, and, but most of the time he just wanted to drink, and I could not have a man are like you, that. Are you against alcohol? I really stand against that right there. Now, I could have been a powerful drunk myself. I, man, I love the taste of whiskey. No telling how much, but I knew that I had a powerful job to do of leading the Bluegrass Boys, and I couldn't be like that. What about you, uh, Lester? Well, I had a fine fiddle player, Paul Warren, you know, for so many years. You think I, he could? He was better than oh, he, anybody? Oh, no, he was much better. You know, when you'd play that uh, Katie Hill, uh, you know it had been played. I remember playing, it well. You know? yeah. And well, uh, I know, uh, I understand, this Kenny Baker carried Bill's sound for a long time. He was kind of a, a big asset to the band. and. <laughs> A lot of folks, I think, would go out and hear Bill just to hear Baker. <laughs> no, no, sir. I, the, when, when Baker left and we finally had to let him go because he was drinking so bad, he was just tearing our show plumb down. He wasn't with us but 27 years. <laughs> uh, excuse the laughter there, Mr. Monroe. Well, that seems That's like... Right. I'm used that, to people laughing Did you at give him a gold watch when he left? No, sir, and I didn't give him no chain neither. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have heard rumor that uh, that Garth Brooks is fixing to cut uh, uh, Christmas times are coming. Now, oh, I understand uh, Mr. Jimmy Martin... And you wrote this tune, and, what, what, what and, is and that probably there? Lester had some uh, no, hand in it, too. No, no, hey, hey, hey. Now, and they said that you might have stolen it from No, him. No, no, sir, no, sir. Now, let me tell you something. Now, Jimmy Martin, he never had a thing to do with Christmas times are coming. Why, he don't even believe in Christmas. Is that right? No, sir. Why, he don't even have a chimney. A chimney? No, sir. And if he was to What is a chimney? Uh, that's uh, that, the, the big thing that that man in the red suit, he comes down that in the winter and puts all the stuff under the tree there. Oh, I see. That's right. So he had nothing to do with it. So no, if, sir. if Garth cuts it, then he'd probably sell it four or five million records. Is that right? Uh, would you be Ooh. pleased with that? Oh, that'd bring a lot of money in there, boy. He won't cut it bluegrass, though. Um, well, th th that would be all right. You said three, four or five million records? Yes, sir. Well, as long as he likes the number, that, and if it would help him, we would be proud for him to do it. So you think that number would help him move on in? Oh, yes, sir. Well, we helped Elvis get his style, you know. He did Blue Moon of Kentucky. Well, that's right. That's that correct. was his first record, and we were proud that it, uh, it helped him get his style. Well, at first, we, we, we really didn't care for it, because we wrote that number, Blue Moon of Kentucky. It's a waltz number, you see. But now, he, he made it up tempo, and um, we didn't like it at all. But after it sold about two million records, we thought, it was really helping him a bunch. Yeah, I can could, I could understand it. Huh. Did, did you ever have anything that, that made someone famous like that, Lester? Well, I, we had the original cut on You Are My Flower, and I, we, a lot of people have copied that little lick that uh, Earl was trying to play. Uh, uh, we've been copied quite a bit down through the years, but I hadn't had any major pieces recorded by huh? some of the new hot acts. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've heard it that Flatt & Scruggs has outsold Bill Monroe in records. Is that true, Lester? Oh, that's no doubt about it, because people know good music when they hear it. Well, uh, Lester, I understand that you're thinking about going all electric <laughs> and having a full plug-in band. Yeah, we're going to get uh, lots of plug-in band. Going to electric guitar, I'm getting me a new Flying V Gibson this week. I'll be playing, and... Uh, uh, Paul's getting him the Parkus Berry set up on his fiddle. I see. Well, what is Earl? What, what will he be playing? Is he still with you, by the way? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Earl's going to be playing the electric banjo. Oh, well, the electric it's banjo. Kind of the Buck Trent style. Yeah, it's a nice banjo. It's the new one that Gibson just made for with him. With the silver dollar on it and everything. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I'm sure glad, and, and I hope that this broadcast has helped the people understand more how people can get back together after 35 years of dispute. That's right. And we have one more question here from, from Lance he'd like to ask. Is there a chance that Flat and Scruggs and Bill Monroe could record another album? Well, our record labels will have to get together on it and see what we can come up with. And uh, 
I don't know how Bill would feel about it, but... Uh, well, that would be fine if, uh, if Lester could get it uh, up there high enough that I could sing tenor to it. Well, if you could get your tenor up there to pitch, it'd be nice, you know. Uh, I'm not, last here, time I'm not I, here to pitch, I'm here to play music. The last time I heard you, you kind of sounded like a like an old cow out balling, you know. Just a caterwauling sound. Is that word, balling? Yes, sir. Oh, they love to talk about that right there, you know. Yes, sir. They had to bring that into it. It's hard to sing with anybody that ain't in tune, you know. Well, I guess, I guess you'd know how that is. Well, now, I, I, surely you gentlemen are not going to start fighting again here. Why, well, no, sir. Lester, he don't want no part of me. See, Lance you know, and I are, are not young enough to be able to come back in 30 years <laughs> and bring you guys back together again. That'd, that'd be about another 30. How old are you now, Mr. Monroe? I was born in 1911. You figured it out. <laughs> okay, I've got 81. That's right. And how old are you? I'm 77. 77. With a bullet. <laughs> that don't surprise me a bit. Well, I, I think all the folks out in Radio Land will be glad to hear that you guys possibly might do an album together. And I they would probably hold my breath if I was you. They probably certainly enjoyed this interview that we, Lance and I have done with you. And I just hope that y'all can continued success. And, and uh, please, you know, no fighting on the way out of the studio today. The, the, we'll, we'll, we'll try to really hold it together. What? What? Oh, hey, 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 hey oh, let's... the shit out of you. <laughs> We're gathered here together at the old sound shop recording studio. This is Randy Blake with WJJD Radio.